people are frustrated. I get it. They don't like change. They like things the way they were, things the way they are. They don't like things to change too suddenly. They don't like sudden destruction or sudden conflict. They don't like what's happened in the country. They don't like what's going on in the world. They don't like what's going on in their home. They don't like what's going on in their job. Things have changed. Things aren't the way they were. Things didn't remain the same. What happened to the way it was, the way we were? I get it. I understand that. I sometimes say, well, what did you expect? <laughs> it is the end of the world. I mean, that's my attitude was when I got saved. I knew it was the end of the world, so I wasn't really expecting, you know, like a garden of roses or a bed of roses. I wasn't really expecting that things were going to get better. I wasn't promised that, you know, things were going to improve for me. So when they did, it kind of confused me a little bit, but I was pretty much told that, hey, it's the end of the world. Things are going downhill fast, and you know what? The world's heading for hell in a handbasket. And I haven't seen any difference since then, and it's been 35 years. I've only seen things going downhill. I didn't get caught up in this kind of you know, Christianese thing that happened after the 60s and 70s when they said God was dead and that somehow we became a Christian nation some point in time, somewhere somewhere after the turn of the century, you know, like when the year 2000. Because before the year 2000, I've never really heard it as a Christian nation. I just heard this, yeah, we're, you know, a Christian nation, it's kind of taken for granted. But it wasn't pushed as a political theme, you know. It wasn't like, oh. But we were told to watch out, you know, to train up our children because if we didn't do the job we were supposed to do, then our children would grow up ungodly. I remember that part. And I remember thinking, well, you know, the end of the world, so don't have to worry too much. Well, 35 years later now, when people are saying we're no longer a Christian nation, we are. I don't know where people get this idea that we're not, because frankly, what kind of nation sends out missionaries regularly? What kind of nation sends out people from the church out into the world? A Christian nation. The point is, is that we don't get to be in charge, and we never were. God's always in charge. And that's kind of where I kind of wonder, you know, I understand when people are frustrated because they got the wrong idea in the first place, the wrong impression about where we're at, but this isn't our home. This isn't our world. This isn't our abiding place. This isn't where we're supposed to be comfortable. We're supposed to feel uncomfortable. We're supposed to not like the way things are. We're not supposed to be looking at this world as though it were our little man cave. We're supposed to be looking at this world as, hey, we're passing through just as fast as we can and we're taking everybody with us, so let's go and get the job done. Let's get on with it because we've got an eternity to go for. But you know, I hear the frustrations. I see people mad at each other. I hear the anger when suddenly someone seems like some injustice is being done and they all rise up in a mass mob and they want to kill somebody or hang them. They want to convict them. I get it. You know, Jesus got it, you know, from all sides. Everybody wanting something that they weren't getting at the time. You know, they wanted Israel to become the king of all nations and the king of kings to come and to declare it so because they were promised that. So they wanted it now. There were those that wanted Jesus to step forward and heal everybody, you know, every single person in the nation. Heal them all, God. And yet he didn't in his own hometown. They wanted it done by someone else, not him. They knew who he was. So forget it, no. Jesus, oh, sorry, anybody else? Yeah, but not him. We know who he is. Carpenter's son. You see, I get it. Everybody wants what they want when they want it. They want solutions now. They want the answer now. They want this now. Especially in the internet age where everybody wants the answer presented to them when they want it. I want to know now. And then I'm going to go right out and fall over the same problem because, you see, 
if you're really getting things too easy, if you've gotten to the place where everything is spoon-fed you, you kind of get into this baby crib and you just go, I want it. I don't like it, so I want it now. I get it. But I'm not sure you do. You see, the children of Israel waited 400 years in Egypt to be delivered. They waited 400 years in Babylon to be delivered. They waited a long time to be delivered. In each one of the times where God had chosen them to go into a different place, they waited. As a matter of fact, I think I've been a Christian 30 some odd years and I haven't even been a Christian as long as they wandered in the wilderness, which is 40 years. And people tell me that our nation is so something, and I keep saying, our nation hasn't been around that long. How long have you been around? You see, if you read the scriptures, God doesn't say he's going to do it in your timing. God doesn't say he's going to do it according to your will. God doesn't even say he's going to do it according to your way. You may have gotten away with a lot of things for a long time now, but I think we're getting into some tough times coming. And I don't mean during 2012. I mean like 13, 14, and 15. It's going to get pretty weird because it's going to kind of get better, sort of. It's going to kind of limp along into kind of a better way. But you're not going to get what you want. Because if you do, I hate to tell you, you'll be deceived. Because if God gives you what you want rather than what he wants, guess what happens? You aren't doing his will. Distributing to the necessity of saints. David said, is there any that is left of the house of Saul that I may show him kindness for Jonathan's sake? Come, ye blessed of my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was a hungered, and you gave me meal. I was thirsty, and you gave me drink. I was a stranger, and you took me in naked. And you clothed me, and I was sick, and you visited me. I was in prison, and you came unto me. Inasmuch as you've done it to the least of these, my brethren, you've done it unto me. I hope you realize that we as Christians aren't meant to be the receivers of all this blessings of God. We're meant to be the givers of God's blessing to those that need it. Because that's how God ministers to need. Needy ministers to need. The Christian was meant to be the answer for these disasters. Not FEMA, not the government, not anything. All Christians were to come running because we are God's example of what he can do when we, as a body of believers, come together to share the love of God to those that don't know Him. If we don't care about our lives, even unto death, if we deny ourselves, then we are more than able to take care of every crisis that's in the world and to bring the gospel into that circumstance or situation without ever having to say a word. Because they'll know we are Christians by our love because we demonstrate our love by going to that poor, needy person. We go to the hungry, we go to the lost, we go to the weak, we go to the poor, we go to the afflicted. There's, there's a statement being made now that you know, with this shrinking supposed government, you know, which it's never been shrinking, it's always growing. But with this new idea they want to, you know, like not make it socialism or something. Well then, let me clarify something. The church is socialism. It is. It's meant to be take care of these people. It is meant to minister to the needs so that we could be Jesus to them. And as we share and do so unto them, we are doing so unto Jesus. That is our calling in our election church. That is pure religion, undefiled, that God said he would accept in his sight. That would really determine, in a reality way, what our salvation is if we are doing those things. Because, you see, if we're not doing those things, then Jesus said, if you're just taking it in, you know, and you're all pretty content, you know, everything looks rosy, you know, you got a fan here, you got plants here, tomatoes, you're growing... You know, and you're just eating the goodness of God and thanking Him for it. Depart from me, I never knew you, workers of iniquity. But Lord, you, you blessed me. I enjoyed it. 
yeah, but where's mine? What did you do with my investment in you? Did you go out and minister to those that were needy? Did you give to those that were hurting? Did you give to the broken and poor? Well, I, I, I told them to get saved. I told them they needed to repent. I told them that they needed to do something. But did you feed them? Mm, no. Well, did you clothe them? Well, we we had a you know we had a clothing ministry. They could have come and got some. Yeah, but what about your family? Did you take care of them? You know, the ones that were hurting at that time. Well, I just don't talk to my family anymore. You know, I'm sorry. You know, they wouldn't want anything from me anyways. I just don't do that. What about the guy that needs a blanket? You know, it's kind of like out there on the street. What'd you do for him? But Lord, he's not saved. People are frustrated. And I do get it. People are angry. You know, and I get it. People are really mad as hell about this, that, or the other thing. You know, especially when it comes to elections. And I get it. But you know what I don't get? I don't get what Christians are doing about it. Because if I understand it correctly, God gave us all good gifts that we should be able to minister not just to one another, but to minister to the world the love of God, the grace of God. I think, now I could be wrong, I think Joseph went through some pretty tough times. You know, I think he was like, really, kind of like, going through it when it was really a bad economy. I think he was really like, devastated when he was kicked out of one place to another and then finally thrown into prison. You know, I, I don't think he got it. I don't think he figured it out. I think he just dealt with it where he was at. He just kept going. And when he was forgotten and his friends didn't remember, he just kept going. But you know, God in his timing brought Joseph into an abundance of authority to take care of everyone around him. Because he ministered not only to those that were of his own household, the Jews, he ministered to the entire world because of the starvation that had happened. Because everyone came to Egypt in order to receive from the granaries. Because there's a famine in all the lands. And so, I don't know if you get it, but you may think of yourself as having a lot of problems right now. You may think of yourself as having a lot of issues right now. You may see things not going the way you want them to. But I don't know if you've realized that you are the solution to the problem for someone else. Oh, you may not think so. You may think that little two fishes and a few loaves isn't going to go very far. But can I tell you something? If you get off your own little party and start dealing with everyone else around you that's really going through it because they have no hope, I think you'll find that you are someone's hope. They're hoping that you really are a Christian. Because they're hoping that Jesus really is in you. And they are hoping that you really do love like he did. Because they know they can expect that when they're in need, you'll be there.